the better we get at this, the easier it becomes. But right now is the only moment you have to be happy. If I get to a point where I'm able to walk on water, it isn't going to make me any happier than I am now. If I'm not happy now, I'm going to argue about how my shoes are getting wet. You know? So it's not about, but the excitement here and now, in the future, like when you go to a movie, you have like, you know, 10 or 8, 8 or 10 previews. So when you know this movie you came to see is over, you know it's not over. There's other movies to come. But you didn't come for the previews. You came for that main event. But the previews is just giving you a little whatever. So perhaps one day I can get into a car and I'll lift off the ground and fly. Yes, that's exciting. But that's not what makes me happy. I'm happy now. And actually when I'm happy now, I'll be happy all along the way. So next thing you know, I'll be in a flying car and still be happy. But if you're waiting for the flying car, if you're waiting for this, you're waiting for that, you'll always be waiting. And when you get it, you will get it. You might not get it, but when you get it, you won't be happy then. You'll be miserable in the flying car. You know, it's just as easy to give someone the finger in a flying car than it's one on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep thinking, when this happens in the world, I'll be happy. And I'm like, no, I'll get happy. And the paradox is this, this will happen. If it's needed to happen in, in conjunction with what your theme is here. So excitement will show you what your theme is. And it will reveal it. And that's how it works. So as we start to really contemplate this and absorb it in, we realize the whole time we were creating the carriage in front of the horse. Now when you take the horse and put it in front of the carriage, that's when the journey begins. It's not the end, it's the beginning. It's the very beginning of the journey. When you learn how to drive a car, that's the beginning, not the end. And then you take off, and then you go explore. All right? A lot of the stuff we've gotten um, through life came through almost, like last time I was here, I told a story about my imagination that started when I was a little boy, wanting to be in a place with sun and palm trees. And, and that was like around the age of 11. Well, when I moved down here about 31, it wasn't until I was about 35 until I started really getting into this type of understanding, I realized I achieved it even at an unconscious state. Even unconsciously, we get lucky. But when you're, not, when you're conscious, it isn't luck, it's mastery. You actually create your world. So when you're not conscious, that's when luck and bad luck come in. And you, you actually think it's the causation of the world, but it's not. It's just that you, were, you weren't seeing what you were doing. You weren't stepping back and looking at yourself. Because everyone here in their physical corporeal body, you're nothing but an image or like a drone, if you will. So there's some guy in, I don't know, Idaho right now in some substation that's controlling a drone over Baghdad. Well, he is not in Baghdad but he's seeing through the lens of the drone that's in Baghdad. He's experiencing Baghdad through that. That is your higher self. So your higher self would be the guy that's in the substation controlling it. Now, if the drone goes down, that guy still gets to go home and eat dinner. Your higher self will never peter out or never give up on you. So we are just concepts that we're grabbing onto. And if you actually realize who we truly are, we are the witnesser of the concept of who we are. So then, like an actor or an actress, I did this role, what role do I want to do next? Or choose a new concept, or blend concepts, don't get rid of the whole concept, and then do that. But we think, no, this is who I am. I am this, I can't do anything else. Well, if that was true, you wouldn't feel bad with that statement, now would you? The reason you feel bad with that statement is because your higher self is holding itself in the position where you are. And when you're moving away, you feel the tension. When you move towards it, ah. Oh. When you move away, you feel the tension. When you go with the stream, it feels good. When you're trying to swim against the stream, it's exhausting. So swim against the stream, and it'll teach you not to swim against the stream. That's what it's for. Free will will allow you to go in any direction you want. What I'm saying is contemplate. How is that working for you? That's a good question I ask. I ask myself it every day. When I wake up out of bed, I'm like, son of a bitch. And then I say, well, how's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I recalculate my thoughts. I'm like, no, no, I feel good. 
and then all of a sudden my energy raises and I feel good. It really is a mind thing. But yeah, we have these programs in us. Don't deny them. And who cares? You wake up and I don't feel good. Who cares? But then realize it's not a big deal. And actually in the act of saying who cares, it's like taking the foot off the gas. And when that slows down, you have a better place to actually look at it and turn it around. But if you're doing 100 miles an hour, you, you don't want to turn that around. That's, that's dangerous. Who cares if, you, if you're in a negative place? It doesn't matter. All right? As you slow down and don't act on it, it diminishes it. And then from a neutral state, consciously choose, well, what, if I want to go to west, we'll head west. Don't mind east. Because without East, there wouldn't be a West. So remember that. We live in a world, in a physical world, that has duality. Everything exists. I get that. But whatever I focus on, I experience. You know, I've used this analogy before. Iceland exists. And Hawaii exists. But when I'm in Hawaii, I really don't think about Iceland. I just get a tan. But I know, at some level, it exists, but it doesn't take my attention away. Too often we're looking around to thinking, well, in order to have a good life, I need this to go away. If you need a certain person to get out of office to feel good, you're in trouble. Because that's not up to you. And then if they get out of office, you're going to find someone else to piss you up anyway. But if you actually settle down, the effect of them will have no effect on you. This is proven. Quantum physicists prove this. I'm doing it from more of a, a subtle understanding because I am nowhere near a quantum physics. But when you actually look into it, and as I speak this, is this making sense at all? And you know why it's making sense? It's because you already knew this. I am not teaching you anything that you already know. As your frequency raises, biologists tell us now, you trigger parts of your DNA that already had this information coded in it. Based on your experience, you're gonna utilize different analogies to feed it out to others or even to yourself. But nonetheless, you already know this. You've probably all heard the statement that the embodiment of Christ is within every one of us. And when they say Christ, it isn't, Christ just means enlightened one. It's called your DNA. You have the ability to raise your frequency and then experience from a new angle. 